All right, everyone, welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I'm your host, Damon Postalka. I'm just happy to be back. Today, I've got an awesome guest with me, Mike Womack from the New Jersey MEP. How you doing, Damon? Great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this is going to be fun, man. Yeah, it's going to be fun because, I mean, we, t- we talked a while back when you're on our, our manufacturing e-commerce success on our, our Friday show and with Kurt and I, and, and man, it's just, it's great to see young people like yourself getting involved in manufacturing. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I know this is, this is October is the month for manufacturers. It's manufacturing really. month, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's start there. I mean, well, first of all, let's talk about you a little bit because right. then we'll get into manufacturing. So tell us a little bit about your love affair with manufacturing and how that started. So it kind of by accident, I I discovered the industry when I had an internship. Thank everything that my major actually made you take an internship before graduating. So I got a little work experience. I was working for an ad agency. I was going to school for new marketing methods and I thought I was going to work at some tech company or some ad agency. And I ended up working for a small company. mom and pop advertising agency that only worked with manufacturers and logistics companies. Oh, wow. So of course I had to learn the industry. I had to write the articles. I had to write the posts. I had to connect on social with other either thought leaders or the manufacturers themselves. And it was probably by the second week, I realized how cool everything I was reading was about manufacturing. And and, I was growing up, they they told me, I like to make things with my hands. So when I was growing up, I wanted to do something with my hands. And my guidance counselor actually told me that all manufacturing went overseas. You got to look at some service business. So it was about the second week I realized, wait, all manufacturing isn't overseas. There's a lot of cool things happening and making and technologies being used. One, I was lied to. And two, (laughs) I really kind of started connecting with the people, the passions and the technologies that were modern manufacturing. And From there, I actually worked at a manufacturing facility because I heard my current CEO uh, in NJMEP, where I'm at now, uh, the New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program, I'll give that full plug, but (laughs) I heard my current CEO actually say that he wanted to accomplish something in the press in Mm -hmm. April. And I don't even remember what it is, but it actually happened in November. I saw a news article coming out that progress was being made. Things actually happened, and that kind of shocked me. And I knew he would never hire someone that didn't work in a manufacturing facility or knows the industry. Mm -hmm. So I started working at a manufacturer as their marketing manager. A great example of the variety of ways you can get into manufacturing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I had an opportunity to enter into NJMEP where I was able to really kind of hone in, utilize the marketing uh, knowledge I had to help advance the industry as a whole, connect through advocacy, advocacy. promotion of of modern manufacturing and what it is get into the facilities and engage with the actual manufacturers and i've loved it ever since i mean since then i realized both my parents are in manufacturing they actually paid for me to go to school with manufacturing didn't realize that yeah because it was such a kind of hidden industry it's kind of brushed under the rug and that's that's me i i just i love live and breathe manufacturing and i love the industry and the people that's cool. That's cool. And I think I think you, as as many, many kids your age, I shouldn't say kids, but people your age. Almost you're younger, 30 now. You're, you're younger than I am. So I just <laughs> everything, everybody looks like a kid. Sorry. But um, people your age, the pa- your parents, and, and this is, I, I found it guilty with myself, two of my kids. It's like, you need to go off and do better than I did. You don't want to do what I do. Yeah. And then I, I turn around and you look backwards and you go, well, that wasn't such a bad life or it hasn't been such a bad life. Yeah. Right. And, and nobody's life is perfect. And you look at, like you talked about service jobs and you look at manufacturing compared to service jobs. It's a lot better work than that. Uh, when I'm, I might say, hey, if that's what somebody wants to do, great, go do that. And that's awesome. Awesome for you. I just, I, I just think people should consider manufacturing. Well, the cool thing is it, it, it's diverse, right? Yeah. If you're, a marketing manager, if you're a 
uh, let's say, a, a, a customer service rep, right? That's your space. Mm-hmm. But if you're a customer service rep or a, a marketing manager or a line, a, a, a line production manager in a manufacturing space, things change. Uh, processes improve over time. Yeah. You can you can connect and find synergies with other suppliers, your local community, find out new ways to promote a manufacturing facility or an operation because it's cool. It, the things move. Uh, there's technologies involved. People are involved every yeah. step of the way. So the industry itself is so diverse that even those particular little uh, service-like jobs, uh, being an admin in a manufacturing space can be so unique and 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 transformative really oh yeah yeah and you you said one thing here people and you know you get to work with a wide variety of people in manufacturing good people i mean good salt of the earth people that are out there some have gone to college for many years some have not gone to college some are phds i mean you know yeah yeah yeah. you're you, you just really don't know and 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 it's and it's so much fun to be able to interact with people across the board like that and and really the exposure you get to people from from different walks of life doing different things really well so uh, just want to say hey for a second to Rodney. I don't know if you know Rodney. Rodney's big in manufacturing hey, in, Rodney. in the Northwest. But um, yeah, if you do not improve the process, you will lose money. Because Yeah, and that's in everything in manufacturing, yeah. whether it's the way you run your – we were just talking in the uh, USA Manufacturing Hour chat about change, yeah. actually. Yeah. And that was uh, – you need to be able to be comfortable with change to continue to improve. Yeah, yeah, it is because it it is one of the industries that is consistently under pressure to get better and reduce costs. Because I I can remember in the day when when people thought you know scrap or waste was normal, mm-hmm. and and now it's just like no, it's, it should be zero. You should be yeah. going for zero. You should always be going for zero. And you know, and and I was in the first wave of that when we were producing things for for like televisions and other stuff that was really high volume where you had to get down to 200 part per million. And, and I, I'm not even going to go to the decimal places in that, but you basically can't have anything wrong. Right. <laughs> and, and, uh, but that was just one example of how the overall manufacturing industry really had to rethink and rethink and rethink and rethink. Yeah. And, and it comes through, and this is a good way that I always like to talk to people about the way quality has changed over time and, and reliability has look at a car today, <laughs> a car that is made today. You can drive it for 200,000 miles. You're going to have to do some things, change some things, those kind of things. A car 25 years ago, you're lucky to get it to 200,000 miles. And and that's just something that we use around us every day, which, which I think is, 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 you know, but it's a great, great industry. So back to the thing I get off on this. But people, people are awesome that you run into. So you you learn this, you get you're in this manufacturing space. Now you start working for the New Jersey MEP, man. What how was that? I think it's fantastic. And and I might be biased because uh Damon, again, I, I really love making things, right? And I, I turned my own garage into a blacksmith shop during COVID. I make little leaves and fun little things and And I get to see and be a part of that process in a small scale. And then I get to walk into a facility that maybe makes the wiring for MRI machines. And it starts out as a giant billet that they bullet drill and they stretch it out throughout the entire facility. And then I get to go to a food processing plant that makes the chemicals and the flavors that we all think are flavors. And then you go over to a textile shop and and then a highly advanced life science facility. There's just... Without being involved in understanding and being at the MEP, you wouldn't know that this industry exists in this diverse way. We could actively help these manufacturers grow and improve. Uh, Rodney, like you're saying, yeah. the first run, you, you try to figure it out. You usually lose money. But then yeah. you work on some processes, uh, lean uh, manufacturing methodologies, and, and, and practice your Six Sigma. You can turn that second run into a highly profitable uh, all the way through. So, yeah. Yeah. And you get to taste that at the MEPs, you get to see that at the MEPs and you get to watch companies, small to medium sized manufacturers grow and, and become a transformative company just with a little support and, and education. Yeah. Yeah. And I think 
when when you i'm just going to ask a general question to you because i think it's so what is manufacturing to you <laughs> uh that's a good question manufacturing is it's it's straightforward but also wildly complex i mean yeah. it, it it can be again from making a let's say making a rivet that goes into a supply box that goes all the way overseas and you never see it again and you realize that that little rivet that little fastener actually went to an f-35 fighter jet and yeah. is flying over the country and that entire <laughs> process that entire supply chain you're involved in that you're a piece of that if you slow up the funnel then everything else slows up behind you and 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 we don't have our highly advanced military jet fighters so it's just so incredible how how one little process one little seemingly little uh link in the chain can be a part of a massive sprawling supply chain it's yeah. it's incredible the science the technologies everyone involved in the process everyone on the floor helps make that possible you that that's a great way to exp, to explain it because it does come down to the to the tiny little rivet that if you didn't have that rivet it's not going anywhere no and and even when you take that rivet and look what it took to make that rivet you know to to make the the metal that made the rivet and then to physically form and make that rivet there's a lot of technology that goes into that it, it's Just incredible to get there yeah it really is and and that's that's cool that's cool very good stuff and rodney said one other thing that we'll, we'll talk about in a minute but careers in manufacturing he's talking about the robotics and how <laughs> that's really increased their revenue and and consistency in a lot, a lot of other things and and um because it is it is part of it and i think really when people are looking at careers why do you think that they should be looking at manufacturing for a career path because it's it's different right it, it's it's highly competitive too i mean it, it's the average annual compensation just in New Jersey is at $94,000. That's a stat I drop a lot. So I was I was looking yeah. when we were going to meet. I wanted something to kind of showcase the resiliency of a manufacturing career as well. In yeah. New Jersey, all manufacturing was considered essential throughout the pandemic. Yeah. Nationwide, the unemployment rate dropped. I mean, I mean it skyrocketed. The unemployment rate skyrocketed to 14.8%. That's terrifying. Yeah. But manufacturing actually was nearly 2% lower than that, than the rest of the nation. So, and, and it only stayed like that for, I think, three months. So yeah. it really recovered quickly because everyone needs Lysol. Everyone needs toilet paper. Everyone needs everything that was going out of stock because most of, actually, the Lysol factory is in New Jersey. So there you go. You have all of these products and all these capabilities and you are an essential individual. I always do this. I, I look around the room and say, but someone that's kind of talking down to manufacturing or about it. And I say, point at something that isn't manufactured. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's, that, that is, it, it is, is a great one when they talk. How about do you get it. through I, life without it? How do you get through yeah. life without the individual that put that semiconductor into your laptop so we can have this conversation right now? Exactly. Exactly. And I just say hello to Gabe. Hey, Gabe, Gabe. Did an awesome post today about the all the live streams going on today, and I was fortunate enough to be mentioned in it. Just want to say thanks so much for stopping by, Gabe, and appreciate that you did that. Um, and hopefully, it helps us get to more people to talk about that. Consider manufacturing for a career uh, because it, it it is something that um, I'm fortunate enough. It supported me for most of my career from the time I started in college, sweeping the floor in a tool room through engineering, put me through engineering school and allowed me to build factories and move all over the country and run companies. And, and you have those skills for the rest of your life. Yeah. Right? And they're yeah. highly profitable, highly sought yeah. after. Once you develop these, once you work and you sweep the floors or you, or you start out as that, that manufacturing associate, it, it really starts to snowball. And you really yeah. start to build yourself up as, as a professional, as a, as a highly sought after, you know, highly profitable professional. It, it it is in the the career the from a career standpoint i couldn't emphasize enough for young people to at least consider it go go and look at some of the manufacturers in your area talk to them meps because i think if i was a student again looking to um, find a place to work and i wanted to look at uh, um, 
manufacturing. I would go to my local manufacturing extension partnership and talk to them because they could probably, they are being approached. I know today they're being approached by manufacturers that need people. Everyone, every client. I mean, and, and, you know, MEPs make it easy. Everyone, every MEP works a little differently. So I'll give a little bit of a brief, uh, the manufacturing extension program partnership. Uh, what it is, is there's one center, at least one center in every state, including Puerto Rico. And we help manufacturers become more competitive, profitable through training and consulting services like, uh, you know, how to implement and and stay consistent with lean manufacturing. Mm-hmm. Six Sigma, uh, we offer HR support, workforce development on both ends. That goes from, you know, the manufacturer, they need people mm-hmm. uh, or they have people that they need to kind of raise up a little bit, upskill. And then also the job seekers, right? So yeah. we help on both ends. We can connect with the one stops, your local communities. We do our own outreach to make sure that people understand that we're here and that the training is available because there is so much training available uh, at no cost often to the job seeker. And then we also work with the manufacturers and the educators to create curriculum, to find out what the manufacturer's biggest needs are so we can develop those skills in those job seekers and accurately place individuals to make sure that we're filling the roles that you specifically need and then work with you through an apprenticeship program because we can uh, host a and sponsor a registered apprenticeship program. So we can host these services with you so they get the on the job training and then they come to us for the classroom training and hands-on skills and new technologies like desktop CNCs and augmented reality welding equipment and and, uh, production technologies. It's MEPs can help people find jobs and help the manufacturers looking for pre- people. The biggest yeah. challenge, everyone. I mean, that's it's across the board. Yeah, it is, and that's that's really cool. So, in, in New Jersey, what are some of the cool companies that you get to work with in New Jersey? I mean, I, don't so, know uh, I actually had a, a, little, a little bit of a list here because first, they're so diverse, and I wanted to showcase a variety of industries. So, we have Unionware. Uh, they actually sit on our board too. So we wow. have manufacturers on our board to help guide us into terms of what they need. Their clothing and apparel, uh, Zago yeah. Manufacturing, they make highly yeah. precise uh, uh, self-sealing fasteners. Uh, they actually manufactured fasteners that went to ventilators during the height of the pandemic. So wow. think about how many lives they've saved. Yeah. 25 person shop, I believe. Wow, that's cool. Revel Nail, Nail Polish and Beauty, Innovative Products oh, and yeah, Chemicals. Yeah. Yeah, 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 very cool. They were actually a, a, a Manufacturer of the Year finalist too this year. Grozinger yeah. Provision, Specialty Foods, Bellis Labs, uh, Life Sciences, All Natural Skin Care, Radwell International. Just connected with them through the USA Manufacturing Hour. Unbelievable. We have a, a video coming out with them soon. We just toured their facility, to, you know, took a bunch of action shots, did a, 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 an interview. Just because I don't think people understand how amazing manufacturing could be. They had robots coming through the track systems. The biggest facility I've ever seen, whole, uh, a warehouse in a wow. facility. Uh massive technologies and people everywhere. So I wanted to make that point because to highly advanced robotics driven, people are still involved. You need yeah. people no matter where they go and, and they need people every single day. Yeah. Well, we've got, we've got Rodney. He's talking about, he's been worked with Six Sigma out of Redmond out here in Washington and Vancouver, Washington. That's cool. And then Gabe asked the question. He said, so you are developing trade training for individuals who want to join the manufacturing community. And I believe that's true, correct? It it absolutely is. And these go from uh, one-off certifications through um, the Manufacturing Skills Council, uh, still Skills Standards Council, MSSC, um, all the way up to personalized curriculum that work with the manufacturer. So we'll take a yeah. manufacturer that needs an individual to be upskilled, and then we'll put them into our registered apprenticeship program and take them through, you know, the basics. What is manufacturing? Quality yeah. and control. Safety is number one. That encompasses every aspect yeah. that we talk about. And then production, manufacturing production, uh, whether that's, you know, lean processes and, and, and you actually walk out of the apprenticeship program with a certified production technician certification. Uh, wow. And you went through an apprenticeship program. So that shows your employer, you're engaged. You have to have uh, a certain amount of on the job training hours, a mentor hooked up to, uh, with you. So it's truly in, an, in a, a complete journey from start to finish with t- taking input from the manufacturers themselves. So yeah. we can guide that curriculum to produce your ideal worker. And, 
again, they're not going to come on site with 10 years of CNC yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't happen anymore. They're, they're retiring, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 So Gabe asked, so are any of these training classes available online or will they be made available online? So we do have an extensive online curriculum available right now. Uh, yeah. a, some of these co courses do incorporate an in-person training component, yeah. but I would say somewhere in the ballpark between 60 and 70 percent of the material training courses you can take online and and truly get get a real nice understanding of manufacturing the critical processes yeah. great ways to improve your efficiency and, and so even if you're a, an entry-level worker and you have some lean manufacturing background you understand six sigma you might understand iso 9001 to 2015 that's a huge selling point for yourself yeah. so yeah, these are right. really cool and, courses, and 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 they're they're cool courses. They're good. I mean, it's it's good basic education for someone to to understand if they're going into manufacturing because you don't want to walk in and and not know anything about what you're doing. You want no, to understand. Hurt. Yeah, what? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can the, the safety training is number one because it, it there. I mean, honestly, there is there is equipment in man in some manufacturing facilities that can hurt you. That's Absolutely. the way it is. And and there's simple things like something can fall on the floor and, you know, break a toe. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's you know, you know, safety sometimes in a manufacturing facility, it seems like common sense. But if there's a spill, let's say you're walking with your water bottle and you spill it on the production floor, maybe in an office, you'll put it in the carpet and walk away. In a facility, you can't do that. And, and there's no. a reason why you can't do that. Or if it's a clean room and you walk into a clean room making the you know, most advanced personalized uh, Moab proteins for your life, you know, in the life science space, yeah. these highly advanced pharmaceuticals. And you walk in there and sneeze without a mask on. I mean, COVID or not, that's a bad thing to do. So, <laughs> yeah, they're shutting it down and cleaning it up, yeah. starting over. And the bio, yeah. bio apprenticeship is, is one that we're starting up uh, this next year. So we have a awesome. huge life science focus and you need those critical skills and that, that knowledge. Now, are these are these available through many of the MEPs, or or is this really unique to the New Jersey MEP? More and more are are taking the okay. model and really running with it. I mean, almost I'd say ninety percent of the MEPs have some type of real true workforce development process. I'm going with ninety because I don't know for sure if all of them do, but I'm I'm almost confident Good. every Good. MEP has some type of workforce training for the job seeker and then that manufacturer. Uh, audience as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if manufacturers are looking for specific training, they want to, you know, provide to their workforce, they can do that. Yeah. 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 It's good stuff. I mean, because yeah. I just can't, I, I can't stress enough about it. young people looking at manufacturing. I mean, it, it, it can be a, a lifelong career where you're making some of the coolest stuff. And you mentioned some of it, you know, I, I even go back to, to my old career. I mean, we, at one company, we actually made the pins that hold the wings onto an F-22 fighter plane. There you go. I'm, we made the, we were the only, only supplier of them in the world. And we made these pins and you look at them, you go, wow. And, it, and they're crazy expensive, of course, too. And Couldn't they, imagine. But they were, they're about, you know, six inches long and they weighed, you know, 10 pounds, eight pounds, <laughs> something. They're heavy because they are some special metal and, of you know, course. resilient kind of things. But when you think about this, People in factories all over in the middle of Wisconsin and New Jersey and Texas, South Dakota, doesn't matter where the heck you're at or out here in Washington State, are making things like this every day. Yeah. And pe people are going to work there and walking out and it's just it's just Damon on the street. Exactly. But in that factory, you don't know. They could be making the next best, you know, best food, whatever. Yeah. It's it's all and, and, going in New on. Jersey. There's eleven thousand manufacturing and stem firms. I mean, oh, there's wow. so much variety, and that's why I keep on going back to that word variety. Yeah. If a job seeker is looking for something that they're passionate about, they're most likely a manufacturer that's engaged in that space one way or another. That goes all the way to community, you know, activism. Oh yeah. If you want yeah. to, you know, I mean, the Manufacturing Cares Initiative. We kind of created this like cool centralized way that all these manufacturers in New Jersey can donate to community food banks in one fell swoop. We can kind of yeah. increase our purchasing power, right? Yeah, yeah. We just raised a million meals for hungry New Jerseyans. The road to a million, <laughs> million meals. <laughs> so that's a million meals. That's a, that's a huge substantial impact yeah. on a local community. So yeah. it's just such an ingrained uh, 
you can you can get ingrained in your company. You can become a part of it. Yeah. Easy because you, you you can be passionate about it. That's awesome that you guys did that as the MEP putting things together. Because I know as a as an independent business, it's hard to think of. Well, what do we do? Of course, we, we want to help our community, and you know we've all sponsored the sports, kids sports, and stuff like that. But when you can we can do something for a food raising meals for people as a group then you can get all everybody you know involved in absolutely it. and and that's th because that's important in manufacturing because in uh, i'm going to give new jersey stats but in new jersey alone uh the average manufacturer is uh, 32 employees and i know it's not too uh it doesn't vary one way or the other elsewhere so they can't have the biggest impact alone but when you combine yeah. those efforts you can really have that you know move the needle and with 32 employees in the average manufacturing facility, an individual means a lot. Yeah. So an individual that's learning the, their, their skills, their processes, you can have a substantial impact on the company itself yeah. just by being you. That's yeah. rare in a lot of companies. You're right. It's You're fulfilling. Right. It is. It is. That's a great point to, because people want to go to work and make a difference. Absolutely. And in, in, a, in a business with 32 employees, like you said, the average is 32, you will make a difference. If you're doing a good job, it, it will show hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. Cause I, I know it's, it's similar across the U S a little bit higher or lower, depending on the state you're in or the mm -hmm. area you're in. But, but that is one of the good things that, you know, people going into manufacturing, you're typically not going to work for Ford or Boeing or something like that. You're going to work for, you know, the, something down the street where they're, you know, they might have 50, hundred employees, 25 employees average, but it's, it's more like a family. It could be intimidating getting into the industry, though. I, I really can be. I understand it. Uh, if you're coming from a, a service background or or just learning your career or making a, a big direction. We had, uh, you know, apprentices that literally span the entire age group of the workforce. Yeah. Because uh, they were looking for a change, something more productive. And it can be intimidating to get into manufacturing. But working with the right partners, uh talking with the manufacturer themselves and saying, listen, this is what I want. I'm looking for X and I want to grow along with you as a company. There may, they may be partnered with the MEP looking yeah. for a new hire to include into an apprenticeship program. They might have an internal company uh, program where they train you from the ground up or support your education. So it starts with that conversation, opening up your, broadening your horizons a little bit in terms of what type of work you'd be interested in looking at. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, you, you said something here about people being intimidated about going into manufacturing, especially as an entry level employee. So what are some things you think those kind of people could do to, to, to help get over that? Because man, I just, we got to get more people involved because it is such a good life choice. Well, Damon, I pulled together a, actually a, a listing on one of these job sites, right, of a, of a manufacturing associate. Okay. And one of the biggest kind of hurdles that might just immediately make you, you look at the next listing is minimum of two years of assembly or related experience required. Okay. And the responsibility is assemble products using tools and machinery, inspect products, uh, quality, accuracy, and then perform other duties throughout the shop. But if you don't have that two years of experience, you might just think, write me off. Let's go to the next one. I need a complete entry level position. Yep. But again, by coming to a partner, coming to an MEP that has a, a training program available funded through a grant for job seekers. Yep. We might be able to help you or put you on a path for a pre-apprenticeship program or, or get you six to 12 months of training yeah. and then get you placed at a manufacturer that wants to put you in an uh, apprenticeship program. Yeah. And then you have three years of training like that. You're in it, you're working, and you're not burying yourself in debt. So a little dedication and a little push of yourself to explore these manufacturers, explore the options that are out there. Manufacturing training in your state. Google it. Yeah. You might find someone to help you. Yeah, and, that's a great point. And you'll find find a really incredible career that will, like you said, uh, last a lifetime. Yeah. Well, and... I mean, manufacturers, good manufacturers, you, you listen to, to people about Starbucks or somebody like that, and they, they're great companies, right? And I'm not going to say they're not good companies. A lot of people work there. That's awesome. Manufacturers, 
pay for college for their people to go from I, I I'm in here, I'm doing something and I would like to do this in the manufacturing setting. They'll pay for your college. That's how I got my graduate school was paid See? for by my employer. And, you know, and these, this kind of stuff, they'll do it for people going to technical school. If yeah. you, if you, if you started working for a machining company and you said, man, I really want to go to technical school to get better at this machining. I, I, I probably could, there'd probably be people lined up to say, okay, you've got a little experience. You want to work here 100%. while you're doing this? percent. Yeah. You know, so, or robotics or just take your pick and any kind of stuff like that. Cause I think that's another thing that, that really is lost in this is that your, your step in is not the ending point. No, 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 no. And it, that's a big thing too. I hear people even, you know, coming on, um, I wrote, I just wrote this article, uh, just, uh, just co or, uh, no collars, just careers. Stop mm -hmm. job shaming, right? Uh, and it really focused in on the the stigmas around talking about going into the manufacturing facility, not immediately after high school, or, or, or immediately after high school, rather than immediately going to college. Yeah. And you know, you're not college material. Uh, not everyone has to go to college. Uh, oh, you found a job that's that's good for you. Where in reality, it was. It's more along the lines of listen, this is just a great next step to high school. You're gaining a different kind of education. You're gaining, you're gaining real life world experience that your college friends are going to be wanting once they look for a job. And then maybe you do that for four years, three years, go to your employer and say, Hey, I'm interested in maybe understanding a little bit more about the business end of your company. And maybe I can go to, uh, go take a couple of these classes at MEP or at the local community colleges or at a, at a, a state school. I mean, yeah. there's no rule that say, there's no rule that say you have to go to college immediately after high school. And if you don't, that you can never get your education or never expand yourself ever again. Yeah. It's the opposite. Actually, you might be able to do more because you won't be buried in student debt. You'd be working for three years and your employer is going to pay for 90 percent of your college. Yeah. I mean, it, just, it's a just win, don't win, know. Win. Yeah, it is. It is. And the other thing is, too, is it's, it's not the right time for some people to go to college right after high school. It's better if you worked a few years, because I guarantee you, if you were putting a few bucks into college four or five years after you are, are, are in the schooling four or five years after working for that money, it's going to be a lot different than when you went out of high school. I bet you'll get yeah. better, better results from your, your time in school. A hundred percent. Again, <laughs> under, just from, you know, I, I went, I went to the traditional route, uh, yeah. high school, college yeah. work. Yeah, I did too. Uh, I wish I didn't. I wish I yeah. worked for a year, two years, three years in between just to kind of understand how the world works. And then I'd be able to relate that since then I've gone taking classes. I've, I've uh, uh, expanded my professional education and I got so much more out of it because I can mm -hmm. relate it to hmm, this process in my everyday life. I utilize this material or I utilize these strategies or I, or I need this information to make this process easier for me and my employer. So, you really gain a lot more out of your educational experience once you understand how the education is applied. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. So this is totally, you know, we talked a little bit about what we were going to talk about and then I just came up with this idea and it's going to be crazy, but we're going to do it and see how it works. So let's, let's name as many different types of jobs that you can think of in <laughs> manufacture until we can't name anymore. And All right. We, in we, manufacturing, we, right? In manufacturing. That limits so us. That limits us in manufacturing. But let's just think about it because, because, you know, and, and, you know, you've got the simple three and I'll start with them, but there's, there's, you can look that people work in production or they work at administration or they work in marketing and sales like we talked about before. But let's get more specific about that. Talk about some of the jobs that people might not think that are really important in manufacturing from, from end to end. E-commerce manager. Oh, there's a good one. E-commerce manager. I'm going to say um, CFO financial advisor. I mean, people don't understand how complex the, the finances are in, yeah. in, in a manufacturing business. Let's um, do uh, operation, operations manager, right? You yep. need to work this operation. The operation of manufacturing is so cool. It's from, from raw materials into shipping out, it's a lot. Yeah. And I want to say you can you can mix this up into a lot of different things, but the technical skills that maintenance people have to have in, in modern manufacturing plants, it's not like 
me going out and working on my car in the garage. It's oh. like you're working on robots and other crazy stuff yeah. like that. So I'm going to say maintenance and I'm going to, I'm going to bundle in different things like robotics, CNC auto, programmer. CN, oh yeah. CNC programmer. That's another one. CNC programmers. You've got, uh, you know, like big equipment operators, like laser operators or punch press operators, yeah. or big CNC machine operators or crane operators. I was gonna, crane you know, stole that from me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I was I was in a facility that I actually managed a facility that we I saw this thing that they were machining and I was like, how the heck do you guys do this? It was like 40 feet by 20 feet by 10 feet. And they were it was a, the it was the base for a crane that went into a mine that that someone had welded and fabricated this thing and we had a machine that was big enough that we had the big enough cranes to put it in and position and we were mount we were putting mounting holes on it for other stuff no way and i was like you gotta be kidding me <laughs> so you know so there's all kinds of different things that 3d can... printing r d i there. was just i was just walking around this facility and uh, right next to a welding shop it yep. was, the facility is massive, 300,000 plus square feet. Right next to the welding shop and machine shop is a pristine room with little plastic trinkets all over it. It was very confused. We walk in. They have seven different uh, 3D printers, microscopes set up. They're actually producing and manufacturing uh, a commonly lost component in a refurbished electronic unit. So they were actually man manufacturing this very kind of benign product that you can't sell the electronics without yeah and they had to figure out how to make them they had to figure out how to make them fast then they started investing into this process and then learned that they could oh we can manufacture an infinite number of other materials and processes and pieces and casings for our electronics it was such a cool spot yeah you know and, and you talk about 3d printing and manufacturing and everybody goes oh that's a great way to prototype stuff I was working in a factory a number of years ago and they did this exact same thing. You said, if they needed something that looked like this, mm -hmm. and it didn't need to be that strong and they could do it. They had a 3d printer just because they made stuff. Yeah. Cause he had, have, he had the big, uh, it was like a 12 foot bed CNC machine in the other room. So if you needed something out of, you know, high carbon, um, you know, 4140, you, you're good. Yeah. 50, 50, yeah. And, and, they, and they're just using it. The engineers are drawing stuff up and engineering is another thing in manufacturing and all these other stuff. It's just, it's just, Rodney's really? right over here, right? Programmers, Programmers fit, fit into, into machinists. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And very, very seldom a programmer. They usually have to start as a machinist to be a programmer, Absolutely. especially complex because it's it's just, it's very difficult to learn. And it's a great way though, that you see the progression. You could start out, you could start out sweeping. You could start out a machine, figure it out, go to school and get a yeah. little better and then be in, in doing programming. Because it really does start at that foundational level, right? You need to know how things are made. You Because yeah. you can't just be, well, you can be trained to program a CNC machine but if you needed to create a product, you need to understand how that product needs to function. You need to mm -hmm. understand the other components within that product. So a CNC programmer with machining experience is a well-rounded individual that you could really rely on to make the best quality product. Yeah. That's why we invested yeah. in those uh, in these desktop Haas uh, PLC uh, desktop CNC mills. They're amazing. Yeah, let's talk about this because I mean we can sit and talk about this stuff forever. And and I wanna I wanna I wanna fast forward to you know, we had manufacturing months and is October. You guys had an awesome manufacturing day kick uh, uh it was wild. Event. Yeah, you said you had over 500 people there, yeah. which is freaking incredible. That's just great. And you know, now we're looking forward though, and in November, let's talk about apprenticeship week. Hmm. It's coming up, right? November 15th, that week starts. And it is from the USDOL, and it's really focused to ensure people understand what apprenticeship is in the modern world, how yeah. it works, exposing young students to new uh, industrial careers that they may have not even thought about. We did a really good job 10, 15, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, explaining that you can't do anything besides go to college after high school. Yeah. Now people realize that mistake and we're really trying to heal that. And apprenticeship week allows and gives manufacturers and educators and students an excuse to connect and understand what apprenticeship means and how it works. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it's that's cool. So what are some of the things that are going to be happening that week then? So what we're actually we inviting do? schools, educators, and um, uh, school administrators into our South Jersey office. We just opened up a new South Jersey office to get hands-on with some of the new cool uh, training technology we just acquired. We have an augmented reality arc welding kit. It's it's so cool. It's actually a, a true weld, like a, a MIG welding yeah. uh, setup. Everything is gutted and uh, LC, uh, LCD screens in there. Uh, the helmet is just the same way as a uh, normal welding helmet. Everything's gutted with an LCD, uh, LSD, LCD screen in there. Yeah. And then also uh, the welding kit and the welding torch is all the same, except the wire is just a plastic rod with QRC codes all over it. So how it works is you're actually put the helmet on and then this, this piece of plastic is in front of you. And when you put that helmet on, you see the world the same, but that's a piece of metal. And then you can even do, uh, uh, what is it? Aluminum, high carbon steel, mild steel, uh, and change the process. So you can actually train welding. It's incredible. It is. Wow. We have a, our welding instructor in here. I've done a little <laughs> welding. It is so similar besides the heat and you, yeah, weld. yeah. You can see it happening on the screen on the on the on the tower, mm -hmm. and you don't go through scrap. You yeah, can train yeah. your you can train your people on a bunch of different materials all in one place. There's no chance of injury for a starting out welder. Um, so we're getting <laughs> people to try those out so you can see it, experience it. We have a desktop CNC mill with an actual Haas PLC, so it's the yeah. same equipment that you're using, just kind of scaled down. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a it's called a Skills Boss. It, it's you can intentionally cause errors in a production process. Yeah. So you need to troubleshoot. It has actuators. Uh, it has all these uh, uh, different pieces that can go wrong, different components that can go wrong in a large uh, piece of machinery, just yeah. on a very small scale. Very small scale. It's like one of those Yukon uh, benches, you know, yeah. the rollers and everything. Yeah. And it sits right on top of that. It's, it's going to be an amazing event because we could really bring – the three critical parts of this workforce challenge into the same room to showcase the industry and the ways that you can get upskill to enter that industry. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I, I really, I, I mean, we don't even talk about apprenticeship in schools. No, it's gone. It, it, there's school. It's go to college. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is something that I think I, we talked about before we got on Matt Goosey at MRS machining they, they in, in Wisconsin there, he's done it for years. I, I think his father actually started doing it when they uh, many years ago in the eighties and, and, and companies that have embraced this and really embrace that workforce development, see the benefits of this over time. And, and it, in a it big is way. It, because in his, and I believe, and I'm, I'm probably wrong, but he said the average age of his workforce is, is like 28. Wow. Think about that. Think about that. How many times have you walked into a manufacturing place and the average age is 20 some years old? And I think no. it was, it, it might've been, might've been. If it was 30, under 40. It would yeah, make it, my it eyes definitely was. The it was one where it just, in my eyes, I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. And he said, no, it's because we've done this. We consistently are, are helping high them. school people find find their careers with us and then get them the training they need. And, and I and bet they're in a better things. place in the workforce uh, aspect than 80% of the manufacturers in the nation. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, this is a, this is a problem. Young people now should think about this too. The average age in manufacturing is much higher than many other industries. I think it's, a, and, I think it's pushing 60. Oh my goodness. It's not that bad, but, but it's, but so if you're coming into an industry, your advancement opportunities may happen faster. Yeah, because because you're there. If you're there, you're showing promise. You're doing what you need to do. You can move up in manufacturing. I said a little dedication before, and I, I want to emphasize that because it is just it does take dedication, right? You have to be committed to what you want. Oh yeah, so you have to show up at on time. That's a big problem. I hear. You know, we we you hear people hire all these people. That's what usually brings them to us. Is we hired three people in the past year. They didn't show up on time. They went MIA. They didn't have the skills they said they did, and then they're gone. So it is just a little dedication to get there. You can make an impression by showing up, trying your best, learning the materials. And a lot of these people that are in this space, and I'm not saying that the average age 60 is, is a bad thing anywhere else, but that means people are close to retirement. It means a lot yeah. of people just want to retire. 
but they can't because they've been committed to their employer. They know them. They yeah. might be like family. They won't leave them without a, a, some help. So they are looking to leave. They're looking to retire. They're looking to pass down this legacy knowledge. You might find a mentor that will, you know, have a massive impact on your life forever. Wait, that's a great point. And because some of the, I, I mean, when I was young, I was very fortunate. You know, when I was still sweeping the floors, people taking the time to teach me about business and manufacturing. It's awesome. And and it's so cool. These people that you talk about being on time, it's much different if you're not on time and I'm doing a job where I'm just going to use an example that came to my head. If I'm bagging groceries mm -hmm. and and the, and I'm and I'm not there on time to bag groceries, well, somebody else could bag groceries, something else like that. If I'm in manufacturing and I'm running a CNC machine no. and I can't show up on time, that CNC machine might have to shut down. Because that goes all the way back to my first comment about you know you're making a, a rivet, but it goes into the F-35 fighter. We might not have, have be as protected. You know, nationwide because you didn't show up on time. <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, it, manufacturing is a cool process because it's an intricate process. Every piece matters. You matter when you're there. Yeah. So you need to show up and, and, and do that part because it matters to everyone else in the facility and, and down the supply chain as well. Yeah. Yeah. You make a good point because you can be making stuff that 50 other people depend on you making in that facility and then they can't work tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's great though that you brought that up. So as as we're moving in and, and finishing our conversation here, we, we're we're excited about a, a apprenticeship week. I think that's gonna be awesome. Uh, the the augmented reality welding, I've gotta go see that some you gotta come next time that, you're around. Yeah, yes, yeah, so that's so yeah. cool. That's so cool. So what what do you really see some of the other benefits of being engaged in the manufacturing space, something that people might not think of. So, you know, the industry is changing. The recognition is changing, which is awesome because, uh, you know, you said you work in uh, manufacturing. People might look down on it. I hate that word blue collar. Uh, yeah. Damon, you, you have a blue, blue collar on, you know, yep. I don't, I don't think you showed up to the facility today to, to, to weld something. <laughs> it doesn't matter that none of that matters. So people are starting to forget that because, Everyone real, realizes uh, what happens when we can't buy from, you know, low cost nations yeah. and you're playing an intricate role and their salary show. So if you, yeah. you know, show up in a nice car, you buy that first house with your hard earned money. It's hard to, you know, look down upon your career when you're highly yeah. advanced in terms of the average. So uh, and, and why I'm saying that is because it's easier to to get involved with communities. It's easier to get involved with the advocacy for manufacturing. You can speak up, you can use that position to posture yourself, network, get out there and really connect with the local community. Like we were talking about with the, um, with the food bank. So mm -hmm. manufacturers, they have the opportunity to really get into their local communities, work with their state uh, and, and, and uh, federal senators, Congress people and, yeah. And really get engaged. You're a part of a really important piece of the nation. And there are so many ways, like a manufacturing day. We have a big networking event that we have. You can get involved with local schools and communities. Uh, you can really build yourself up to be a part of the manufacturing community, which is sprawling. And, and usually statewide, they're pretty. it's a pretty tight-knit community. So if you want to build up your network, if you want to start learning more, if you want to potentially be a business owner. You can make all of these connections to, to position yourself uh, above and beyond the rest. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome, man. I think we're just going to, we're going to have to stop on that. I, I'm, I'm speechless. You do a great job, Mike. It's always awesome to talk to you. Right back I at you, Damon. Love the energy, man. And you're bringing it and showing young people that there, there are career opportunities in manufacturing. They should be considering today. And, and uh, just, just out there being such a great advocate for manufacturing. I so appreciate it. Right you. back at you. I appreciate you having me on. I really do. It's always a pleasure speaking to you and, and, and getting to share that experience because it's so often overlooked. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thanks to Rodney and Gabe for being here, dropping some comments in. It was great to have you guys on here and everyone else is listening. Hey, if you want to know something about manufacturing in, in New Jersey, 
contact Mike Womack at the New Jersey MEP. They will help you get what you need. Whether you're a manufacturer looking for help, whether you're an individual looking for skills. And if you're not in New Jersey, look at your local MEP. Yep. They're all over. Like you said, they're in all 50 states and Puerto Rico. So do that. And thanks so much for being here today, Mike. Thank you. And I will be back again next week with some more great people talking on Faces of Business. Thanks, everyone.